All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Sienna Solutions Challenge student panel discussion during the Youth Made Festival. Um, and this uh, webinar is going to be featuring student teams from India, Taiwan, and Tanzania. My name is Carissa Bowen, and I am a project manager working on the learning experience design team here at Digital Promise. And today I'm joined by my host, uh, my co-host, uh, Jess Alanis, and I'll let her introduce herself. Thank you, Carissa. Hi, y'all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Jess Alanis, and I'm from Texas in the United States. Um, I'm a learning experience designer here at Digital Promise, and I support various initiatives like the Sienna Solutions Challenge and the Youth Meet Festival. I'll be moderating the chat and Q&A today, and you're more than welcome to leave your comments and questions for the amazing panelists that are gonna to present today. Thank you. Thanks, Jess. Um, and just a heads up for our audience, um, if you are um, wanting to have your captions to be displayed um, during the webinar, there is a function where you can um, select uh, for closed captionings to be displayed during the uh, webinar today. So um, just a heads up, it should be at the bottom of your uh, toolbar um, in the webinar. Another message for the audience, as you listen to today's presentations, uh, we invite you to share your thoughts, observations, and questions by using the prompts that you see on the screen. Um, please feel free to share any thoughts or reflections that you may have um, at um, during the during your presentations today. Um, so if any questions come up for you, um, if you have something that you're wondering about related to a project that you see, you're welcome to use the Q&A function. Um, you might want to share something that you learned from the student teams. Um, maybe there was a challenge or a product that raised the question for you, um, or maybe there was something you found unique or inspiring. So we invite you to use the Q&A function. Um, and then at the end of today's presentation, we will share um, all of the questions that are directed to the panelists. And um, we'll also share any reflections or observations um, during this time. So if this is your first time hearing about the Sienna Solutions Challenge, I'm gonna give you a little bit of context about what it is um, and how we got here. So the Sienna Solutions Challenge is a global design challenge uh, that really invites uh, students, uh, middle and high school students and teachers to design solutions to real world problems or issues um, that essentially uh, help to take action to build a better world around um, them. And so since launching in 2021, um, more than 550 teachers from schools and youth organizations around 67 countries have engaged with the Sienna Solution Challenge in some um, way, whether it be a professional learning experience um, or it essentially invites students to uh, submit a project or a prototype um, using the challenge-based learning framework. Teachers and students collaborated to think really big about compelling issues that they are passionate about. Uh, students asked meaningful questions, um, that really kind of got into the investigation mode of their challenge. And essentially students were um, able to design actionable solutions to those uh, questions. And so student teams submitted their creative products like podcasts, digital games, apps, uh, data visualizations, interactive maps, or something else. Um, leveraging uh, digital tools and technologies to address the challenges that they identified. And so uh, once student teams applied for their 2,500 2, USD uh, Sustainability Award, those students uh, were awarded um, with funds that helps to sustain and scale their solutions. Uh, so we had a team of Sienna employee volunteers um, that provided assistance and really their subject matter expertise um, to provide meaningful feedback to each project. And so I know we might have some Sienna employees on the in the audience today. So we'd like to spend, send a special thank you um, for being a part of the challenge and providing feedback that inspires, motivates, and encourages uh, each uh, student team to continue to scale uh, their designs in the, for the future. 
And so just to give you um, an entire uh, comprehensive list of our awardees for the second year of the Siena Solutions Challenge, uh, we've had over 500 educators in 67 countries uh, globally participated, like I mentioned before, in the challenge. And so here is just a, a, a list of our 2023 um, sustainability awardees. So that's another congrats to all of the awardees. And so um, during today's time, uh, we are going to be uh, hearing from each of the panelists um, uh, from each of the different student countries. And so we have um, our student team um, from Vikas Bharati uh, Public School in uh, Delhi, India. We have uh, student teams from the affiliated senior high school of um, the National Normal University in Taiwan. And then finally, we have um, our student team from uh, Telta Mwanza chapter in Mwanza, Tanzania. Um, so in a few uh, seconds, we just wanna break the ice a little bit um, in the chat box and get sort of familiar with um, our co our panelists for today. And so panelists, we love if you share um, in a few sentences why you enjoy making art, activism, or design in your community. Um, we welcome you to share your responses in the chat box and we'll spend about 30 seconds to hear from everyone um, that wants to participate. If you're in the audience, you're welcome to uh, share your thoughts as well. Um, so panelists, if you um, want to share your responses in the chat box uh, or if you want to jump off mute, you can do that now. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, I, I think I, I can make a few comments on uh, yeah, why I absolutely. enjoy making art. Uh, when it comes to making art, I actually do sketches. I have a Instagram account that posts, I posted my sketches, which I'm not by any means a professional. I didn't re receive uh, arts education or anything. I just found that from time to time when I have free time, I found uh, drawing and making sketches to be a fun activity to relax myself and really just explore my creativity and imagination. I love Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's really important to, you know, of course, like I agree, um, finding an outlet to to share your expression and um, and your feelings and sort of kind of using art as an outlet. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Cool, well, if there are um, any other responses to this icebreaker, feel free to share them in the chat box. Um, if you are including your responses in the chat box, please be sure to include your name and the country you are joining from today. And um, also you might want to select um, when you are chatting in the chat box, uh, please make sure to select everyone uh, you might be set on host and panelists at the moment. So just to give you a heads up on that. And so we will move on to our first presentation for today. We are going to hear from our student team from India. Um, their uh, big idea was life below water. Um, their essential question is, how to monitor the water quality and save aquatic and animal life. And um, you'll be able to hear from them now. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And student team from India, feel free to take it away. Namaste, what an all present here. Today, I part good from India. And I sure is any from India. Other Mishra from India. From India. We are here to tell you about a major problem which whole world is facing in. I want to ask a question. Have you ever faced water scarcity? Anyone in the audience who would like to answer? My team members or anyone? In the chat or someone? No. Okay. Somebody else? Okay. Uh, I should 
consider it obviously no because we are living in a urbanized and in a modern country but have we thought for a rural areas in rural areas mostly people many people in fact have to walk miles and miles to take uh, to achieve a one single bucket of water but is that water successful them can they use it maybe the water can contain millions and millions of bacteria that can uh, that can be hazardous for the villagers for this single and a major problem we vikas bhartans have made a brilliant solution for it ai sensor boat ma'am aage uh, next slide and the next one and the next one ma'am now i would hand over shori seni uh, to tell a deep uh, inspection why we made on this project only why we only made on this major problem ma'am next slide yeah we came up with this idea after seeing the report stated by niti ayog and we realized about how uh, much important this topic is according to niti ayog uh, compose a uh, 2 lakh people die every year due to inadequate access to uh, uh, inadequate access to safe water in the same report of niti ayog it is estimated that about 600 million people may face water stress thus contributing about 40% of india's projected population by 2030 now i will hand over to athar mishra to tell you a deep and a perfect solution for this major problem So the prime ob objective of this project is to implement a sensor boat capable of assessing water quality parameters like turbidity of water, TDS level, pH level, and temperature of water, and floating a lake or pond. This device is equipped with IoT services to upload the gathered information to IoT cloud. Now a mobile application is implemented on two map. The locations of water resources in India are spotted as red, green, and yellow to indicate the quality of water. Red represents infected and unsafe water. Yellow represents low-grade water that can be treated and converted to usable water, and green represents that the water quality is good and need light filtering. Ma'am, next slide. Now I will hand over to Shaur Asheri to tell you a deep science and chemistry behind this project. There are pH probes containing two electrodes inside the body, a measuring electrode and a reference electrode. The glass electrode contains a reference electrolyte, usually potassium chloride, which has a neutral pH of seven. Therefore, it contains a specific amount of hydrogen hydrogen ions in it. Ma'am, next slide. AI behind the project is we have used machine learning, Internet of Things means IoT, light refraction concept, conductivity of the solution, and thermocouple. Next slide. Now, third Misha will tell you about few major and main sensors we have used in our project. So let's move towards the pH sensor. The basic principle behind how a pH meter operates is that when two liquids come into contact, an electric potential is created that may be measured. In other words, there is an electrochemical potential between two liquids when one is placed inside a glass enclosure and other is placed inside a different solution. Ma'am, next slide. Now, Shorya will tell about the temperature sensor we have used in it. Yeah, temperature sensor is transducer used to convert physical parameter temperature to electrical signal, and this signal is applied to con uh, to controller to uh, calculate the exact temperature. In this project, DS one eight B twenty temperature sensor with probe is used. Ma'am, next slide.
Now my young one will tell you about turbidity sensor. So turbidity is another performance metric of water quality analysis. Basically provides about information how many particles are added into water by scattering of light from particles in water. Now Iana will tell you about TDS sensor. Many rules to monitor health and water. We have many rules for monitoring. It is basically give us me measurement in PPM. Next slide now. Now I will tell you the whole circle how the project works. Now imagine a farmer who used this project and used in a in a pond. Now the project will take the data from the from the lake and send it to the IoT cloud. We have used Bluetooth model to connect the project with the application in the phone so that the farmer can control it from uh, on his own. And now from the IoT cloud, the information will be sent to Municipal Corporation of Delhi, MCD. In the uh, Delhi, MCD plays an important role. It uh, it keeps it keeps Delhi and India clean for the tourism and for a better environment. Now, Municipal Corporation of Delhi would be having two choices: either sending a tank full of water or dug a well in the village. Both the situation would resolve the problem of water scarcity. Next slide, ma'am. We have we have uh, used reference link here for your references if you want to see the video. Ma'am, next slide. Uh, should I share the video? What? Um, I think no, we share the video. I think um we sh if you can share the video in this in the chat box, um we could share it so that way we can let the next um group go. This is a form of written link. Uh, you have to copy it on the YouTube for the same. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, if you want to stop sharing, we will prepare to um, get ready for the next panelist. Thank you so much, student team from India. We'll be sure to share your YouTube video in the chat box. If anyone has questions for the team, please um, be sure to use the Q&A function. We um, actually are having a little bit of difficulties with the chat box um, function. Uh, so if you have any questions um, for that student team, if you have any reflections, please um, use the Q&A function in the Zoom um, chat box and excuse me, in the Q&A function and we will be sure to, to share them at the end of the call today. So in our next um, team, we are actually going to hear from student team from Taiwan um, around their big idea of intercept, intercepting river garbage. And their essential question is, how can we prevent the garbage from entering the ocean? And so um, I will actually stop sharing my slides. And student team from Taiwan, feel free to share your screen and you can take it away. Uh, thank you. I will now proceed on sharing my screen. Uh, okay, I want to make sure that everyone can see my screen and everyone can hear me. Is that correct? Yes, we can hear right. you and we can see your screen. Okay. Hello from Taiwan. We are the team from Taiwan. And today I am going to introduce you to our project, Guarding the Ocean innovating an interception device to protect life below water. We are from the affiliated senior high school of National Kaohsiung Normal University. Our team members are Artie, Steve, Ken, and Thomas. The problem that we're dealing with is the issue of marine debris. Taiwan is a tropical island which boasts a lot of uh, wonderful beaches. 
Therefore, the problem of marine debris and beach cleanliness is especially important for us Taiwanese. In 2021, we went to a beach near Kaohsiung Harbor and found that there were a lot of trash on the beach. We attempted to remove the trash through beach cleaning and discovered that there were a lot of different types of garbage on the beach as well. There were metal cans, injection needles, combs, clothes hangers, and pieces of such pieces of styrofoam and plastic that has been broken up so tiny that we couldn't pick, pick them up. We found that this method of manual removal is simply not efficient enough. Therefore, we designed a device that can be installed near rivers and intercept garbage before they enter the ocean. It is called the capture zone system. While conducting our research, we came across a device called the ocean cleanup that caught our attention. The ocean cleanup device focuses on gathering garbage in the ocean. We thought that, and we thought that if we could install a similar device where a river meets the ocean, we might be able to prevent trash from entering the ocean through the river. Next slide, please. However, the ocean cleanup device is quite large, which could pose challenges in terms of storage and transportation. To address this issue, we redesigned the floater with a paper folding design called Paco Paco. This new design allows our device to have a similar garbage capturing capability while being foldable to just one tenth of its original size. We named this modified device the Capture Zone. And here's the, uh, sorry, uh, last slide. And here's a picture of the folder model. As you can see, the floater can be folded into just one tab of its original size. Next slide, please. And uh, this is what the floater looks like after being unfolded. And uh, we used CNC laser cutter to make the floaters. You can see it on your left hand side of the screen. Next slide, please. To connect each individual floaters and enhance the strength of the structure, we installed a long wire in the middle. Another advantage of this design is that while the whole device can be separated into many individual parts, it's easier to maintain, transfer, adjust, and repair the whole system. For example, if part of the system is damaged, we could just simply replace the damaged part without needing to withdraw the entire device to repair it. Next slide, please. And here's the design of the capture fabric. The capture fabric has two main parts. The green part, the waterproof fabric for capturing underwater garbage, and the gray part, the ballast that pulls down the whole capture fabric. Next slide, please. And this is the downsized capture zone model we built for testing the efficiency of our design. And for the experiment part, we'll uh, Ken, can you uh, go through the experiment part? Uh, after the introduction of the capture zone system. Oh, come on, man. Can everyone hear, hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. Uh, after the introduction of the capture zone system, now I'm going to introduce the purpose of our experiment. First, we want to know the effectiveness when it's against different types of, types of garbage. Second, we wonder our capture zone's effectiveness when it comes to different sizes of marine debris. In the last, we will determine whether the capture zone system is a possible solution to the issue of marine debris or not. Next, next slide, please. To start an experiment, first, we need to set up our device. We use a water tank filled up with water and an underwater motor that connected to water holes to create a simulated estuary. And we use the capture zone to capture different types of garbage. Next slide. Uh, here, and here we are showing you guys some videos of what a device looks like and how it works. As you can see, our capture zone system is flexible and the shape can be changed due to the current. Next slide. 
So here's our experience data. The graph on the left shows our capturing ability to intercept different size styrofoam balls. It can be seen that our device can effectively intercept styrofoam balls on three sides, which is large, medium, and small, and can achieve a 90% capturing ability. The other graph demonstrates the capturing ability against different types of marine debris. We can see that we have a higher ability to intercept paper cups and bamboo chopsticks. Other garbage such as plastic cups and straws can be captured, but the effect isn't well, which is a goal that we will continue to strive for. Next page, please. So the current model has shown a great ability to contain floating objects, but when it comes to light, weight plastic garbage, it tends to follow the downwelling flow and go under the capture fabric. This means that we will be less able to intercept lighter plastic weight. So the current model should be improved by modifying the size and the underwater capture fabric of the current model. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the future plans of our, of our project. The next step of our team is to improve the design of the capture zone system based on the experiment results. We then plan on to increase the scale of the experiment and build a full-size model of the capture zone system, because the one earlier is a microscopic one. And we plan on to use the full-size version of the capture zone system and conduct an experiment on a real-life river in Taiwan so that we can see how effective the actual system is against a real life environment and how it would react to a, the natural ecosystem of the river. We also plan to collect the data from the river experiment and publish it on a website, a public website we made to share this information to the public. For more details, I would drop a video link of our journey in the development of the capture zone system in the chat box. If you're interested, you can check it out. It is just a five-minute video. And that's about it for our presentation. Uh, sorry for not muting my mic earlier. Uh, thank you for listening. That was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm sure there are a lot of questions that the audience has about your um, projects. And so um, audience members, feel free to share any questions that you have for that team um, in the uh, Q&A function, or you can use the chat box. Um, so finally, we have our last uh, student team from Tanzania. Um, the student team uh, tackled a big idea of transforming underserved schools. Um, and their essential question was, how can we use a uh, multimedia dimension to transform ESL slash EFL in public secondary schools? So we're excited to see uh, or learn a little bit more about this uh, project. And so um, student team from Tanzania, feel free to share your screen. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so good day, everyone. We are the super team from Tanzania, going to take you through an adventurous presentation. Education system goals presentation, and I hope you enjoy as you pay careful attention. I'd like to welcome my first partner, Janet. Start sharing my screen. Okay. Okay, here it is. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Janet Bashir from Tanzania. 
Um, today we are going to discuss about IQ challenge, IQ in touch, IQ, IQ inter-school child TV program and English second language for public secondary school in Lexon, Tanzania. Um, this discussion is aimed at supporting education for sustainable development, which is stipulated in SDG Agenda 5, 4 and 5, in which Agenda 4 based on quality education and Agenda 5, gender equality. Um, in IQ projects, almost 60% of our activities, we engage girls and only 40% we engage boys. This is because to empower girls, because we have been lowered for a long time, every time boys are higher than us. So we are trying to build like inequality between us. And we also engage the most and deserve the public school in Lake Zone like public school and private school, we are trying to make them equal at their education level. Um, I, would like, well, I would like to welcome my friend for proceeding. Thank you, everybody. My name is Karen. I'm here to lead on when my fellows just ended. To continue on the project, the project explores the issue of competence-based curriculum and also solving the challenges of English as a second as a medium of instruction in the public schools in Tanzania. In our project, we aim to tackle the following problems. We aim to, to, we aim to invent or to establish and make people explore. explore the talents outside the four walls of the classrooms. Also in our project, we aim to emphasize on digital technology in classroom to the use of tablets, computers, and iPads. Also in our, pro in our program, we, invent, we, we want people to engage in critical thinking in, in competence-based question instead of engaging in curriculum-based this the system of claiming questions and answer. Also in our project, we aim at project presentation, innovation, skills, robotics, and talents, and girls' community of participation and also leadership. I'd like to welcome my fellow to lead on the following. Thank you so much. Basically, I'm going to take you to the achievements as well as the privileges. illustrations. The first pictorial in here shows the uh, various presentations that we see how immensely changed. It was like the it was just like a moment of change as we appreciated how the local people, how the authority and everyone saw potential in us and the their efforts to try to invest in our work so that we can keep on doing what we're doing. The second picture illustration shows the competence-based question and answer segment on Star TV, which was aired internationally, where everyone was able to see and get to view for themselves what we're trying to do. And we saw that at the end of the day, we're awarded with certificates, which were mind-blowing. I, I also, got a certificate and uh, it was just enhancing on English language speaking as well as engaging in the question and answer segments that we get to, to be invited in. The third picture illustration shows our goal outside the classroom. For example, we recognize each and everyone's talents which are maybe poetry, which can be robotics, which can be aerobics, literally anything. And we saw how we were also provided the opportunity to present that in front of the public, whereby students got to use their own creative knowledge to craft something, to just build something which they love and perform that God-given talents out there. So that was the, those are the privileges which we basically received that we still treasure up to today. Now, I would like to welcome my other partner to show you the main objectives and aims of the project. You're, you're um, before, before you all move on, 
it looks like your slides are not advancing. We can hear you great. Um, and we can see your we can see the first page of the slide, but we can't see that the slides are advancing. Do you want me to share your screen? Because I have your slide deck here and I can share and advance the slides for you. Okay, you can help me with that. Okay. If you just stop sharing and then I can go ahead and share. Okay, great. I think I was following you all. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can see. Okay, let me know if I should go back or is this a good place to start? Okay. So as I said, the IQ team, it gave us a opportunity to pre present a uh, various project with the science, maybe various experiments. And at the end of the day, they were aired internationally on television. And we see that at the end of the day, we were awesomely rewarded with uh, certificates as well as awards, which which showed us that people in the community saw our potential, they saw, they saw our hard work and appreciated it. So that was just a mind blowing experience for us. And then the second one, the next one shows just like the competence-based question and answer segment that uh, both the uh, schools from the undeserved schools, such as the public schools, the government schools, as well as the private schools here in Tanzania, everyone could engage so that we all can learn and benefit from this amazing experience. On the left side, we saw the certificates that we were given by the authority. And it was just so, it was very honoring for all of us to be able to get these awards. The other slide, the other slide elaborates on the appreciation of talents by uh, the program because we see that everyone has a talent. It can be poetry, it can be robotics, it can be aerobics. So we are able to cultivate our God-given talents and present them to everyone by just using the craft knowledge that we have and be able to create and design various projects that could be beneficial and uh, everyone could enjoy. I would like to welcome my other colleague to, of course, and we have the 30 second video. Kirsa, ma'am, can you help me play that? Okay, so that's our IQ session on television, whereby we saw various students use their creative knowledge to create and design various projects. And uh, I hope in your own time, you can be able to see the link and uh, enjoy it. You can pause the video there. You can pause. Okay. Now my fellow student will continue with the elaborating more on, on the project. You're welcome. Well, good day to everybody. My name is Ishkal. I'm here to explain about the actions toward the project. The project was launched during the onset of COVID-19 pandemic in 2019 in Tanzania. As you can remember, during this period, there, there was a wide spread of COVID-19. So most of the schools in Tanzania were closed. And we think this project was allowed to help the students to continue their studies at home through different medias like phones, iPhone computers, and computers and the television. So I'd like to welcome my colleague to proceed with the next slide. Hi, everybody. My name is, I'm going to talk the first plans. I'm going to talk about the projects. The project plans were to scale project in other regions, not only here in not here only here in Mwanza, but to other regions like Shinyanga, Tabora, and Tanga. To make it sustainable project, it should not only stay for a short period of time, but it should stay for a long period of time. Use other use other multimedia platforms such as radios, 
such as radios and other TVs. Not only listening to the TVs, but some of them doesn't have TVs, so they use radios. Connect with multi-talented multi students with VETA. Not only students, they have talents like creating robotics and musicians or poetry. They should go to VETA so that they can teach others to do so. Thank you. I would like to welcome my colleague to proceed. Hi, everybody. My name is Azbella from Tanzania. I would like to thank Sienna for Digital Promise and Sienna Solution for supporting her project in Tanzania. And I will continue using the sorry, and we'll continue using the funds for project scalability and sustainability. Thank you. You can go to the next slide. Um, if you want to see on the improvements and adjustments and daily developments of our project, you can watch our social media at Instagram, YouTube, as well as the email address there so that you can benefit and just see how we keep on growing from these opportunities. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, student team from Tanzania. We really appreciate your work. Um, and uh, at this time, we uh, want to open up the floor for any questions or any um, feedback specifically from the co-panelists. So I'm gonna share my screen and we will start our discussion. Um, you know, it's always really exciting to hear from student teams around some of their action concepts and some of the questions that they have um, so we invite uh, teams, if uh, any student teams, if you have questions for any of the projects that you heard about, um, feel free to, uh, you, can, you can unmute and share your thoughts. Um, maybe you learned something new from the teams. Was there something that raised a question for you? Or is, you know, we'd love to learn how your design solutions have impacted your community. So does anyone want to start? Um, I'd like to comment. I'd like to comment on the Taiwan group for the beautiful device that they basically came up with because personally, I'm a person that really appreciates marine life and I really care for the watchers. So their presentation touched me and um, uh, I hope everything goes well and works out for everybody. It was just so amazing. Thank you for your kind compliments. That's so wholesome. Thank you so much. Um, I might want to answer one of my, uh, my Taiwan's team member asked me some uh, something on the chat. Uh, so I want to answer him. Can I move forward? Yes. So he asked that uh, why I only my our team made only the boat can't we uh, attach sensors around the India so that we can uh, get the information about the uh, unclean or the undesirable water. So I want to just tell you that we um, we just made it a boat because there is a very large area for a pond. So a small sensor can't detect a large area so we have made a boat so that uh, it can move around from the application so some commands are to be sent on the application to move it forward backward left and right and to send the data there are uh, some more commands nothing but one two and three four in a numerical way and uh, you also are something else also one second mm. yeah and there are many lakes and rivers and ponds in India, so we can go everywhere and install the sensors and many more um, circuits and hardware. So we just made a boat. You can purchase it from anywhere for for in India and many more places. So for that purpose, we so that it can be available to everyone. And for placing it from each and every district place, that would be a very tedious work. So that's why.
Thanks for sharing a little bit more um, detail about your project. Um, I have a question for all of the groups um, and it, we can start anywhere. Um, maybe we can start with um, the last team who went, but I'm curious to know if, um, or if you all ran into any roadblocks or issues with when developing your project. Um, I'd love to learn a little bit more about those little details that maybe you didn't anticipate or you didn't know that were gonna you know, come up in your action concept. So did anybody experience any challenges or issues? Uh, there were, uh, I am from part from India. There were many challenges as from making the circuit, there were some uh, many errors coming out in the programming also. So we did a lot of time spending in it. And we also knew one thing that if our team members are with us, then uh, any challenge we can face with no problems. Mm -hmm. And we sat together and took out many, as many flaws as we could, as many problems as our team members thought. Because if they are in a doubt, then there would be a mess in uh, presenting. So we took a lot of time and we spent days and days on it so that our project can be good. Thank you. Um, student team from either Tanzania or, or Taiwan, would anyone else like to share? My one of my uh, teammates want to share. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's network issue. So maybe Taiwan's team can be continued. Can get oh, uh, thanks for killing me. OK, I, I'm going to share the, the difficulties that our team met during the process. Our team met with a lot of difficulties in the entire process. And because it is a it is a three-year plan. And over the, over the entire course of the project, we've met problems like uh, in the first year where we were applying for the ocean challenge in Taiwan and we were struggling to hit to uh to submit our proposal before the deadline because our project we want to research the project thoroughly before we submit the project but the deadline is com coming close so i remember i had to work until like 2 a.m in the morning just to finish that uh, just to finish the proposal and in the first and second year we built the giant water tank and it may look easy but the water tank, after it is filled with water, it is extremely heavy. Even with like all the team members, like four people, we can't actually move the water tank after the water has been uh, fully filled up. After the water tank has been fully filled up with water. And we conducted the experiment at school. Uh, I remember that uh, a worker from, a, a teacher from school told us that we can't put the water tank in the balcony that we're doing the experiment on. Uh, she wanted us to move the water tank slightly to the right side, but the water tank was so heavy. And if we want to fill the water, we need to do like two days to refill it. So we end up draining all that water out, move it a little bit to the right and refilling the water tank. So I believe that Moving the water tank is one of the difficulties we met in the process as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, student team from uh, Tanzania, would you all want to respond to any issues or any roadblocks that may you may have um, experienced in your process? That is a very nice question. Um, as you can see in Tanzania, we have a problem of we have, a, we have a problem of science and technology. In most schools, we don't, they don't use computers as, as public schools. Some students live in far places. Some live even lim in remote areas. Others come from villages to go to study at schools, but also use of iPads, phones, computers. It is very difficult. So as I can continue. Another roadblock that we came up with along the way is uh, the schedule. 
we have a really tight schedule, which is basically filled and uh, plentiful with academic issues. So we find that um, chances for engaging in programs, me having meetings, meeting people, then the society to discuss about the problem that we face as uh, students really needs time. So that's a big challenge for us. Thank you so much for sharing. We have a, um, a follow-up question to that from Joe Burt um, in the chat box. You might not be able to see it, but as a follow-up to my question, he asked, what life lessons or skills did you all learn um, or gain from, from those challenges or those roadblocks that you faced along the way? It sounds like everyone had experienced some form or fashion of, um, of uh, things that you don't uh look to see if it's coming or not so we'd love to learn um what life lessons or skills did came out of that so you we can start maybe with the tanzania group and then go back to the india group thank you so much um we gained a lot from the challenges that we came up with for example endurance and patience because it really took time for people in the society to really get to know the importance and vitality of what we are doing as students. So it really wasn't a, an overnight process, but we saw that it took months, it took efforts, as well as uh, dedication. So we really learned to be patient and enduring individuals as students. Thank you. Um, Taiwan, a uh, student team from Taiwan, would you all want to respond to any life lessons or skills that you learned from those challenges? Um, yes. Uh, during the process of developing Capture Zone, the biggest, uh, the most important thing I learned is that creativity just they are not just came out of nowhere, but they're combined with a wide learning of knowledge. Is uh, well, like if I don't know that paper folding could be used in, in engineering, and I don't know that there's a there's a device called ocean cleanup that's um collecting garbage in the ocean, well, then we won't be able to come up with this idea. And, well, I think it's just like what Steve Jobs said in the speech in Stanford University. Uh, he said, life is about connecting dots. And, well, there won't be Mac computer if he didn't have the um, writing lesson from this university uh, as a ballot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Life is about connecting dots. I love that. Um, and the last team, student team from India, uh, do you want to share any life lessons or skills that you learned? Uh, I want to share that main and the biggest life lesson was teamwork and listening others point matlab we have to uh, give an importance of others point and others point of view of uh, because everyone is different in india and have a different mindset so maybe the problem we are resolving it can be resolved in a, another way and in a brilliant way so um, I just want to tell you that teamwork was the main lesson I learned from, I personally learned from uh, while doing the project. And we have to tell you about that we can't suggest this thing is impossible. Everything is possible in our life. Like we face many uh, of the problems in our project. But we, we do we do it and our project is completed. Thank you so much. 
That's awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate this conversation and um, we're extremely proud of the work that you all have been able to put forth. Uh, we know it took a lot of trial and error um, and it'll probably continue to, to take that because you know a lot of creativity is born out of mistakes sometimes or things that you don't anticipate. And so um, we thank you all so much for being able to share your um, expertise with us. And um, we can't wait to learn about the next uh, iteration of your projects and how you go forth and, and build out um, even more exciting action concepts. So thank you. Um, so we have a couple of announcements before we close out today. Um, Jess, do you wanna share a little bit about our EdCamp that's coming up? Yes, yeah, thank you so much, Carissa. And just like a quick note before um, I go with announcements, I did share the link to our Sienna Challenge project, um, direct, sorry, gallery <laughs> in the chat. So all the student teams today who presented, you're able to see their whole process, as Carissa mentioned, their trial and error, all the links that they shared, their videos, y'all are welcome to browse through the gallery to check out um, your panelists and the attendees as well. You're welcome to check out all the projects in our gallery. And we're gonna move on to um, our announcements. So again, thank you to our incredible student panelists and educators for sharing their inspiring work. We have plenty of more opportunities to continue these type of discussions. And one of them is gonna be our upcoming Ed Camp. So during the Youth Meet Festival, we'll be having an Ed Camp this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. If you haven't attended an Ed Camp before, it's free and it's open to all educators. And this Ed Camp will be an incredible opportunity to connect with other educators during the Youth Made Festival. And you'll be able to discuss opportunities and ways to support youth creativity innovation. We would love to have y'all join us and please feel free to share this with your peers, your colleagues, and anyone who would be interested in attending this Ed Camp. You can register with the link that's in the chat. It is an Eventbrite. And we hope to see you th there this Saturday. And I did also want to note about um, our community awards that we're doing for the Youth Made Festival as well. So if you attended to support a panel today, you can fill out a form to give kudos to the teams that you feel did an amazing job. There's a form in the chat here. And in that form, um, you will put in the student teams or the student panelists that you are sending your kudos to. And we will use those kudo forms at the end of the festival to give our awards to our student teams. You don't have to fill it all right now. You have um, pretty much the entire month, the rest of the month of the Youth Meet Festival to fill out the form. You can also, um, panelists and educators, you can share this um, kudos form with other attendees who plan to watch this video recording later once it's live. So um, if you have any questions about the community awards, just please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help with that. And um, we've reached the end of the panel discussion. And congratulations again to our student teams. I hope y'all are so proud of the amazing job that y'all did today. And again, we want to thank um, our attendees for joining us today for our first um, student panel discussion of the day. We do have um, upcoming events that you can register to attend. So in about well, in an hour, we're going to continue the panel discussions from student teams in uh, Canada, Costa Rica, and India. So if you're able to, and this is also for um, our panelists today and our attendees, if you can attend, we would love for you to join us for our next session there will be a link in the chat to register for um, the next group. And later on today, we will have a global ed chat on Digital Promises Twitter, where uh, we'll continue to highlight student voices. So be sure to follow Digital Promise on Twitter to join the conversation. And you can also follow our new Youth Made Instagram page that will also be put in the chat for y'all. We encourage you to use the hashtags um, Sienna Challenge and hashtag, hashtag, that's a tongue twister, hashtag Youth Made to share your content, your comments, and your shout outs on social media. I know a lot of folks um, have started adding us on Instagram. So again, if you have an Instagram page that showcases your uh, projects or your content, feel free to tag us and we'll share it with our audience. Um, I know there's lots of links to chat. There's tons of links in the chat. So the best way to kind of keep track of everything and all the events is to go to our Youth Made event directory. We'll also put that link in the chat and you're just able to scroll and look at all the upcoming events. And just as a reminder that the Youth Made Festival is still happening, it's going on for the rest of the month. So um, if you want to still add new content, existing or new content to the Youth Made directory, you definitely can. And we are out of time, but again, thank you all so much for being here and I'll pass it back to my colleague Carissa for any final closing.
Thank you so much, Jess. And um, that's pretty much it for us. We really appreciate all of the student teams that join from different parts of the country. We are rooting for you um, from all over. And we thank you so much for joining our student panel discussion today.